Hi, Assalamualaikum. Today we're going to chapter 4 in production management. We will look into forecasting. Okay. Okay, the learning objective for this topic. Okay, we're going to look on the uh, method that we use for forecasting, especially in the production management. They will be on the qualitative and also quantitative. Okay, what is forecasting is all about? It, it is about predicting the future event. Okay, with the scientifically and also there's a base, there's a calculation to do the prediction. And then by taking into the historical data and projecting them into the future. Okay, for example, we have the population. Okay, the population that we predict by 2000. Uh, 100 that we're going to have 11 billion people so this one is the process of forecast and also uh, for example of the handphone shipment so we know that uh, going to be on an increasing trend upward okay the forecast is all is used to predict the demand okay and also sometimes you need to know the planning for raw materials and so on Okay, forecasting uh, time horizon is uh, based on the short range, medium range, or the long range. Okay, for the short range, usually for short term planning, okay, up to one year or three months, and medium range forecast, usually for sales, production planning. This is what we look, we're going to look for, okay, and it's mostly in monthly or maybe up to three years maximum and then we have the long range forecast this one is for the long term for example planning uh, like you're expanding your factory okay you want to build a new factory and also coming up with the new product okay type of forecasting basically there's an economic forecast okay we want to know the inflation rate okay the currency rate and also the technological forecast okay, to predict the next coming technology, especially for the new product. And the third one is the demand forecast. This is what we're going to look in this uh, chapter okay, for our production management. We want to predict the sales, the demand, okay, the enrollment of the uh, future event. And then why is it important to have forecasting in the management, okay, in the factory because for the human resource how many people that we're going to hire okay we we will plan out like a month how many workers that we need to have in our factory to work we don't don't do it every day okay today we have 10 tomorrow we have 15 no we always plan ahead the capacity okay uh what are the the order that we need to to give to the supplier on the raw material how many um, eggs you want to buy how many uh, how how many butter and so on so you need to do the planning okay on the capacity and that supply chain management is very important for forecasting data because they want to know what are the customer demand what are the uh, requests from the supplier and so on so all of these need to use the forecast data okay in forecasting there's two approach the first one is quantitative this is the one that we're going to look deeper into this chapter in which we use calculation we will use historical data we will use mathematical technique and formula okay especially calculating of demand of uh, pc let's say demand of um uh, cars okay so all of these we will do the calculation okay the other one is qualitative qualitative they don't have data usually they have a very small, little data on the previous Okay, so maybe this one for uh, new technology, new product that not yet been uh, widely used in the world right now. So usually they use the experience, the institu institution in which they use the instinct. Okay, usually by the expert in the field. Okay, so there's no calculation, there's no formula. All right. Okay, let's go 
uh, into the quantitative that you're going to learn, there's uh, two types, two category. The first one is time series model. Okay, we use, uh, we base on the uh, month, year, and there's a four method that you need to know in which we have the naive, moving average, the weighted moving average, and exponential. And then there's another uh, category we call associative model in which we use linear trend. Okay, these are the time series. What we're going to look into this kind of forecast. Okay, we're going to look at the trend. Okay, overall uh, persistent, we, we want to see it going upward like this one or downward. For sales, we are looking for upward trend. Okay, if your sales is going downward, it's not a good sign at all. Okay, seasonal component. We want to know if there's a pattern, okay, in the demand. Usually, uh, sometimes it based on the uh, uh, weather, okay, on maybe on the uh, festive season. Okay, for example, if you have cookies and you're making cookies and cake. So, during the festive season, your demand will be double or triple. And also uh, the cyclical component, this one usually for uh, long term is more on the business cycle, okay, economical, so they have the cyclic pattern, okay. Usually they have the associative relationship. And the last one is the irregular and random component, okay, this one is like haywire, it's unsystematic, so because there are lots of randomness in this system for example road accident it's hard to predict the road accident maybe during the festive season orang balik kampung yeah it will have some impact there okay okay these are the uh, method that we're going to look into further okay let's start with the knife approach this is very easy uh very basic in which it's uh no need calculation okay just a simple uh, look and see and usually it cannot provide a high accuracy okay for example we have this um january to june okay this is the actual so we want to predict the forecast so what they will use they use the last the previous month forecast okay so for january this is the actual so for forecast they will use the previous month forecast so for february they will use the january and then for forecast for uh february they uh, sorry for march they will use the february one okay bring it here and then for april they will use the march one okay you just use the previous month uh, data it's very simple okay the next one we're going to do the averaging operator okay we will look into the moving average method okay this one is the most common that we will use all right and usually n is the number of month or years usually month yeah how many months moving average three months so n will be three moving average four months four months moving average so the n gonna be four Okay, for this example, it want you to give you give three months moving average. So three months moving average, how to calculate? Can you use three months starting from January? No, because you don't have the previous data. February, can you predict for three months average? No. Can you do much? No, because you don't have the three months data above you so you only can start april because you have the data for march february and january so how to calculate the three months average for april you by using the january data february data march data and divide by three because they want the three months moving average so you will get 11.67 okay Let's do for me. For me, we're going to use the data from uh, February, March, and April. They need to use the data just above them. Okay. So for me, we're going to use data from, okay, from where? From 
uh, February 12 and then we have March 13 and then we have April 16 divided by 3 and for June which data you're going to use you're going to use the data from March April and May okay and for July you will use the data from April May and June if they say they want four months moving average so you, you will use the four months above okay all right what is the difference between weighted moving average okay weighted is to use when there's trend present okay present on the we can see it on the on the on the data okay there's a 10 trend so the difference is you need to have weight okay weight and also the formula also different in which you will use the sum of weight you don't use the number of months okay let's look at this example uh just like the the one that i showed you just now but this one they have the weight applied so last month means that bulan terdekat daripada yang dia nak predict so kalau dia april bulan terdekat dengan dia adalah march okay so kita akan guna tiga untuk bulan yang atas dia sahaja okay so for Dua pula, okay, dia guna with untuk 2 months ago. So, kalau di April, dia akan guna untuk uh, bukan March, February. Okay, and then untuk satu, maka paling kecil, usually untuk bulan yang paling jauh. So, yang ni untuk 3 uh, weight. Sebab dia bagi 3, 2, 1. Depends. Untuk moving average, kita, uh, untuk weighted moving average, kita kena kira berapa weight yang diberi. Kalau untuk moving average tadi, dia akan tengok months yang diberi. Okay, so kat sini ada tiga weight. So, soalan dia kata 3 months weightage moving average. So, dia bagi tiga weight. Kita kena sum the weight dulu sebab akan dibahagikan nanti. So, Januari boleh buat tak? Tak boleh. Februari tak boleh sebab dia tak ada data atas dia. March boleh buat tak? Tak boleh. So, bila kita boleh start, kita boleh start April sahaja. Sebab April ada data daripada March, February and January. Okay, so macam mana nak kira how to calculate these are the weight, the green one. So, remember I told you that bulan terdekat dengan April, dia akan darab dengan 3. So, in this case, March darab dengan 3 and then 2 is for February and then 1 untuk January. So, bagi kenapa bagi 6? Sebab the formula said divide by sum of weight. Okay, you dapat 12.16. So, April guna darab dengan berapa? Darab dengan 3. March darab dengan 2. February darab dengan 1. Okay. And divide by 6. Untuk Jun pula kita akan guna data mana? May, April, March. And then nak darab macam mana? May akan darab dengan 3. April akan darab dengan 2. March akan darab dengan 1. So you do the same thing for July. Okay. Nampak tak perbezaan moving average and weighted moving average? Okay. These are the uh, for moving average data dia um, kata forecast dia tak berapa tepat sangat. Okay. Dan dia tak sensitive to changes and dia perlukan data yang banyak. Let's say 4 moving 4 months moving average. So you perlu data 4 bulan sebelum tu. Kalau 3 months 3 bulan sebelum tu. So you need a lot of historical data. Okay. Alright, kita akan tengok common measure error. Okay, common measure error ni untuk apa? Untuk membezakan antara actual dengan data kita forecast. Okay, lagi kecil measure of error. Error kalau kecil lagi bagus. So, we are looking for the most uh, minimum error. That's the best. Okay. Usually, uh, kita ada tiga jenis iaitu MAD, okay, MSE, and juga MAP, M-A-P-E. Okay. All of these uh, have different formula. Okay. So, how this video I'll show you on the weightage movie average with M-A-D.